Hello from sunny Kiev. I would like to say hi without sunglasses, but I can't because I literally started crying with the sun and wind. So maybe later I remove it. So anyway, in Kiev it's awesome weather and uh, it's Sunday. A lot of people walking. So uh, my idea of this video today. Before the full invasion, my full-time job was a tour guide and I assisted foreigners with documents and different questions about like visa and real estate, uh, investments, like everything. So, and when the Russia invaded, then I become work with media. So what I want to say, this year I noticed that time to time I had a couple of tours already. So in Jan and February and this week too. People from different countries like Great Britain, uh, US, my last client, came to Kyiv and uh, really they know a lot about my country now. I can feel the difference, like now those who is coming to Kyiv, they either they work in with uh, the government, either they are media person or security or they provide some help or uh, like different uh, made a different job and support Ukraine, so they already know a lot about situation, about war, what was happened 10 years ago. And what I noticed from my side, uh, when I start my tour, I start my tour differently. Like before my tour began in the center and I speak about like historical part, like about cathedrals, about monastery, about like historical part of the center, about given rules, everything. And uh, later when we were on Maidan, I of course mentioned about like revolutionary dignity. But now uh, my tour is started uh, here near destroyed Russian tanks. And uh, I had idea like, let's imagine today you are visit Kyiv and during the war and I would like to provide a online tour for you and just to start and uh, just to start my tour and talk about different different things in my town and like important things so let's start So we all know that the full invasion began in 2022 in February and the original Putin's plan was to capture Kyiv within three days. And so they preparing for some victory and parade and uh, the soldiers even brought with them a special parade uniform that we found later in the tanks. And in order to show that actually their plan became reality, uh, every year on 24th of August, on our Independence Day, uh, we organized a parade of destroyed Russian tanks. So, and here on Michael's uh, Square, near St. Michael's Monastery, uh, every day you can come and see destroyed Russian tanks and equipment. Actually, which shows that their plan failed and we are in a battle, in like battle more than two years but all in all it's 10 years of russian ukraine war so a couple words about monuments uh, before the front invasion i speak about queen Olga. she was the first uh, woman baptized about kirill and mefori invaders of kirillic alphabet and apostle andrew but now my and uh, like the goal of every ukrainian it's to speak about that there are a lot of women in the army and they need a special equipment. Uh, they need a body armor and they need a special form. And uh, this is war not only for men, a lot of uh, women use this profession in their life. So you see now she's wearing body armor and it's uh, like we're speaking about that she needs body armor. So yeah, I see there are some soldiers arrived. I didn't want to make much uh, video there, uh, like, uh, you know, for some security reasons, who knows. So about tanks, I show you some video about tanks they brought from different place from Ukraine. And we will go closer to Michael's monastery. Oh, 
So we are near now my first monastery. Uh, I speak later about a revolution of dignity in 2014, but a couple of words about this time in 2014. This monastery was a shelter for injured people, for injured protesters against the government. So now people come here to pray and uh, very often here funeral Ukrainian heroes and uh, here on the wall of Michael's monastery you can find a memory wall of fallen soldiers is uh, starting in 2014 and if we walk to the end it will end it like now unfortunately there is no more space to add more photos uh, I recall a year ago I even shoot the video it was empty space and so yeah that is the very beginning date in 2014 and we will walk to the very end I show you how the wall look right now. So it's almost the end. I don't want to focus like especially on someone because they're all heroes. So I just want to show you the space. The people is bringing flowers. And yes, this is very and so I removed uh, my glasses because you know I don't like uh, to make a video when people cannot see my eyes um, and I hope I can survive for the next half an hour so <clears throat> because you know it's sun and cold wind and for me it's uh, really uh, really a problem yeah it's windy it's sunny and I don't have someone behind the camera that can tell me Tanya fix your hair or uh, do something with your makeup so I really have no idea how I look right now but I hope it's okay uh, as during my tours, I explained that Kyiv is a very hilly city. It's a long story how we divided Kyiv on upper town and downtown. And now we are right now on a hill. And actually we are in historical center. And behind me a uh, signed uh, Sophia Cathedral. It's in UNESCO heritage list. It's dating back to 11th century. It's famous for unique frescoes and mosaics. So, but like, you know, it's a lot of places and uh, Kyiv is full of history, a lot of places uh, to talk about. But now uh, I would like to go down the hill to uh, Maidan and speak and explain about our revolution and show you something more of what has changed since 2022. So we are going down to Maidan, it's one of the way. So we are on Maidan, on the Independence Square. I uh, also want to mention that when the foreigners came out to Kyiv, 
uh, everyone uh, asked me if it's safe to travel or not. So there is no safe place in Ukraine right now because the missile could be everywhere, the shrapnel could be everywhere. So uh, it's not exact answer, but what I can say, if I complain, uh, compare Kyiv to uh, Kyiv in 2022 and now, it's completely different because in the beginning the troops were so close to town, the front lines was 20 kilometers from here, so it was really dangerous and scary, they come very close. And right now we can live our life uh, time to time from air raid sirens and from uh, rocket attack. So. If you come to Kyiv and uh, uh, you feel not comfortable because a lot of people don't go to uh, shelters and uh, they just at home, uh, if you don't feel comfortable and uh, like you're scared, which is totally normal, you don't have this experience of the war, whenever it's a red siren, you can go to uh, any underground, any metro station, it's open during the night, during the day, and it's operated as a shelter. And you can wait there because beside the air, uh, beside the rocket attack, nothing going to happen. The troops is very far. Only rockets and uh, drones and so on and so on. This is bird. Okay, I will go a little bit because the birds uh, rub my attention. Uh, so also, uh, travelers ask me about uh, shelters. For me, it's like the best shelter is underground because, of course, you can see the map with shelters that close to your house and to your home but actually what's going to happen we have this on map and if you go there it could be close or it could be like in very bad condition so the best way go to the underground or like or you can just stay at home because i feel like kiev is uh, cannot say safe but we intercept almost all the rockets so uh it's uh, much better, much better now with all their stuff that we have from different countries. Uh, so we are on Maidan and um, what I can say, I'm originally from Kyiv and when I was 13 years old, I remember the free charity concert from Elton John, Scorpions came, I remember lots of events in 2005 and so on and so on. So it was like a place for different concerts and we stayed here and drink different beer and have fun. But since 2014, this place is not for fun. We even before had a Christmas tree here, the main Christmas tree, and we have to remove this to Sofia Square uh, because of uh, memory for the fallen activists in 2014. Uh, so what's now in Maidan? Uh, since 2014, we have the memory alley. We will walk there now. And usually when I start also my tour, I speak about revolution and dignity. Uh, about uh, Stella of Independence and Hotel Ukraine. So, a couple words about that. So, uh, you see our Stella. Stella of Independence. We become an independent country in 1991. We built here for our 10th anniversary in 2001. Behind it, you can see uh, Hotel Ukraine. It has unfinished roof. So, briefly, uh, uh, Stalin died and next leader uh, Khrushchev uh, decided not to spend, you see there, not to spend uh, money on the construction and uh, just left it like here. So it has unfinished construction, unfinished room, but hotel is working and so it's okay. So now we go uh, there, you see there is no traffic uh, because it's our memory um, alley for there fallen activist and soon I show you the new what's you see their flags it's from 2022 so let's go okay a couple of words about war and history during Second World War the center of Kyiv not historical one where the cathedrals in church there was like Khrushchev and Maidan was destroyed so it was built 
and uh, reconstructed during the Stalin times. And it looks completely different, this part of the town, than a historical part of the town. Because in historical part of the town, you can find uh, houses more than 100 years old. Uh, here, unfortunately, it's, uh, you can see a huge construction, huge building, like to show the power of communistic system. So, okay, I said it. So we crossed the road, there is no traffic. Um, here you can see the hedgehogs that we used in the full invasion. We didn't remove them. Just behind me. And I think you know world famous artist Banksy. He came to Kyiv and Burajanka and he left uh, arts, so he is one of them. So let's speak briefly about evolution of dignity in 2014. Uh, the, everything began in November 2013 when the president Yanukovych didn't sign the documents agreement with the European Union uh, and uh, the students uh, went for the peaceful demonstration and they were beaten and next day their parents came and more people gathering in a few months and few weeks so and the government didn't take uh, actions to change it and one day in february uh, protesters uh, it was like heavily here and protesters were killed by sniper from the roof it's one of the roof it was hotel ukraine and other roofs so this day died a lot of people and of course died and disappeared more but we have uh, like memory of hundred, heavenly hundred who was killed and uh, this is a photos of them and the street we're walking now it's closed since then there is no traffic uh, and memory alley So after the protesters killed and the situation went out of the control, uh, our president Yanukovych decided to escape and he sit in his helicopter and leave the country. And we all went to his like village that was behind the two fences. No one know what has happened there, and we find and we found his palace. We call it now palace of corruption because he stole a lot of money. And uh, we found a golden button and uh, like chandelier uh, for one million dollar and so on and so on. So he lived as a king. So it is also worth to visit in Kiev if you here to see how our president used to live. And it's called Mezhigiria. I once I did a video about this place, so I will um, leave the link right here so we can watch and also I highly recommend to watch um, the documentary movie on Netflix uh, it's called Winter on Fire it's about revolutionary dig dignity you will see the documentary uh, photos and videos from this place it was a lot of press here so uh, so yeah like this is what come to my mind right now uh, so since 2014 everything began, the, they get Crimea peacefully. Uh, this was appeared in some green soldiers and they made a referendum and then started war in Donbass. Donbass it means like Donetsk and Lugansk together. So. so we are in war with Russia since 2014 and 
Mm, the difference is in 2022 it was full invasion. In 2014 it was like locally, only in the east, and we tried to agree with agree with Russia lots of time. Um, like we signed the Minsk Agreement first, we signed the Minsk Agreement second. Uh, it was ceasefire, but they broke the six ceasefire. So it was uh, war. Like sometimes it's heavy battle, sometimes it's quiet, sometimes agreement. So as you see, nothing works during these eight years and two years ago. Uh, like what what they did, they collected power eight years. And they were prepared 10 years, like no, less, uh, now it's 10 years. They prepared eight years for the full invasion. They made a plan how to get all Ukraine. So, and we realize now there is, um, makes no sense to us to agree and speak with them about something because this doesn't work. We came from there. There is up is, uh, Michael's monastery in Saint Sophia monastery. Now we are down the hill, and you can see Main Street Klishatik and the word "I love Ukraine." Yeah, uh, again, so sorry about my glasses, but honestly, uh, without them I couldn't see anything. It's so bright here and cold wind, so Im impossible. Uh, so we are now near the flags. So there is a story behind them in 2022. The mother's relatives from battalion Azov came here and put 55 flags of their sons, husbands, brothers who were killed by Russia in Mariupol. And the flag has name, surname, and date. After that, uh, the people who know at least someone, one soldier, uh, came here with the flag and um, write their names and date. So, what I can say about this? What's how it looks like after two years of invasion? One flag means one killed heroes. So during the war, we don't know the official statistics about how many have killed, have died, but Zelensky told it was 30,000, which is like maybe officially and counted, but we don't believe this. So you see how many flags are here and uh, um, I will show you now. We used to say that we live now because someone have died for us, so my life right now cost I don't know how many lives of fallen soldiers um, so like it's a like life because of someone so actually this what I want to show in the beginning and speak about like in the beginning of the tour and speak about some important things before the all history moments about like second world war famine about first world war and uh like through all the things that ukrainian went through so um like yeah this is how i start my tour and i hope one day you will come to ukraine and i hope soon we will win and you will come and see Kiev, see Ukraine with your own eyes. Um, like really, I believe it will be like touristic season, let's say, after the war will over and we will win. So, what else I want to say? You see this guy on the gate? It's Erhangel Michael. 
he is one of the guards of Kyiv and he has protected our city from evil and demons. Yeah, we also make fun that he is, looks like a Batman. Actually, that is how we call him. So you see, we have Archangel Michael that protects our city. We have Saint Sophia. Inside, there is written that how long Saint Sophia will stay, how long will stay Kiev. So let's hope and believe for the best. Uh, let's hope that and believe that we will win this war and life will back to normal and soon we will come to Kyiv. So thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for your interest in Ukraine. I hope you like this video. Uh, you watch it and you feel like maybe you have 30 minutes walk uh, in Kyiv. You see the life, the, the people have coffee and walk with tea coffee in the streets. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for your interest and see you very soon. Bye.